May the peace of the Lord be with you all, as we bring to you the readings of today's Holy Mass. Let us now listen to the Word of God. March 30th, 2024 Holy Saturday at the Easter Vigil in the Holy Night of Easter. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. But the earth was empty and unoccupied, and darknesses were over the face of the abyss, and so the Spirit of God was brought over the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And light became. And God saw the light, that it was good, and so he divided the light from the darknesses. And he called the light day, and the darknesses night. And it became evening and morning, one day. God also said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide waters from waters. And God made a firmament, and he divided the waters that were under the firmament, from those that were above the firmament. And so it became, and God called the firmament heaven. And it became evening and morning the second day. Truly God said, Let the waters that are under heaven be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And so it became. And God called the dry land earth, and he called the gathering of the waters seas. And God saw that it was good. And he said, let the land spring forth green plants, both those producing seed, and fruit-bearing trees, producing fruit according to their kind, whose seed is within itself, over all the earth. And so it became. And the land brought forth green plants, both those producing seed, according to their kind, and trees producing fruit, with each having its own way of sowing, according to its species. And God saw that it was good. And it became evening and the morning the third day. Then God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of heaven. And let them divide day from night, and let them become signs, both of the seasons and of the days and years. Let them shine in the firmament of heaven and illuminate the earth. And so it became. And God made two great lights, a greater light, to rule over the day, and a lesser light, to rule over the night, along with the stars. And he set them in the firmament of heaven, to give light over all the earth, and to rule over the day as well as the night, and to divide light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. And it became evening and morning, the fourth day. And then God said, Let the waters produce animals with a living soul, and flying creatures above the earth, under the firmament of heaven. And God created the great sea creatures and everything with a living soul and the ability to move that the waters produced, according to their species, and all the flying creatures according to their kind. And God saw that it was good. And he blessed them, saying, Increase and multiply, and fill the waters of the sea. And let the birds be multiplied above the land. And it became evening and morning, the fifth day. God also said, Let the land produce living souls in their kind, cattle and animals, and wild beasts of the earth, according to their species. And so it became. And God made the wild beasts of the earth according to their species, and the cattle, and every animal on the land according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And he said, Let us make men to our image and likeness. And let him rule over the fish of the sea, and the flying creatures of the air, and the wild beasts, and the entire earth, and every animal that moves on the earth. And God created men to his own image, to the image of God he created him, male and female, he created them. And God blessed them, and he said, Increase and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and the flying creatures of the air, 
and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every seed-bearing plant upon the earth, and all the trees that have in themselves the ability to sow their own kind, to be food for you, and for all the animals of the land, and for all the flying things of the air, and for everything that moves upon the earth and in which there is a living soul, so that they may have these on which to feed. And so it became. And God saw everything that he had made. And they were very good. And it became evening and morning, the sixth day. And so the heavens and the earth were completed, with all their adornment. And on the seventh day, God fulfilled his work, which he had made. And on the seventh day he rested from all his work, which he had accomplished. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm The response is, The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. For the word of the Lord is right, and all his works are done with faithfulness. He loves mercy and judgment. The earth is full of the mercy of the Lord. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord the heavens were established, and all the power of them by the Spirit of his mouth, gathering together the waters of the sea, as in a vessel, laying up the depths in storehouses. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen for his inheritance. The Lord has looked from heaven, he has beheld all the sons of men. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Our soul waits for the Lord, for he is our helper and protector. Let your mercy, O Lord, be upon us, as we have hoped in you. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. A reading from the book of Genesis. After these things occurred, God tested Abraham, and he said to him, Abraham, Abraham. And he answered, Here I am. He said to him, Take your only begotten son Isaac, whom you love, and go into the land of vision. And there you shall offer him as a holocaust upon one of the mountains, which I will show to you. And so Abraham, getting up in the night, harnessed his donkey, taking with him two youths, and his son Isaac. And when he had cut wood for the holocaust, he traveled toward the place, as God had instructed him. Then, on the third day, lifting up his eyes, he saw the place at a distance. And he said to his servants, Wait here with the donkey. I and the boy will hurry further ahead to that place. After we have worshipped, we'll return to you. He also took the wood for the holocaust, and he imposed it upon his son Isaac. And he himself carried in his hands fire and a sword. And as the two continued on together, Isaac said to his father, My father. And he answered, What do you want, son? Behold, he said, fire and wood. Where is the victim for the holocaust? But Abraham said, God himself will provide the victim for the holocaust, my son. Thus they continued on together. And they came to the place that God had shown to him. There he built an altar, and he set the wood in order upon it. And when he had bound his son Isaac, he laid him on the altar upon the pile of wood. And he reached out his hand and took hold of the sword, in order to sacrifice his son. And behold, an angel of the Lord called out from heaven, saying, Abraham, Abraham. And he answered, Here I am. And he said to him, Do not extend your hand over the boy, and do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God, since you have not spared your only begotten son for my sake. Abraham lifted up his eyes, and he saw behind his back a ram among the thorns, caught by the horns, which he took and offered as a holocaust, instead of his son. And he called the name of that place, The Lord Sees. Thus, even to this day, it is said, On the mountain, the Lord will see. 
Then the angel of the Lord called out to Abraham a second time from heaven, saying, By my own self, I have sworn, says the Lord. Because you have done this thing, and have not spared your only begotten son for my sake, I will bless you, and I will multiply your offspring like the stars of heaven, and like the sand which is on the seashore. Your offspring will possess the gates of their enemies. And in your offspring, all the nations of the earth will be blessed, because you obeyed my voice. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm The response is, You are my inheritance, O Lord. The Lord is the portion of my inheritance and of my cup. It is you that will restore my inheritance to me. I set the Lord always in my sight, for he is at my right hand, that I be not moved. You are my inheritance, O Lord. Therefore my heart has been glad, and my tongue has rejoiced, moreover my flesh also shall rest in hope. Because you will not leave my soul in hell, nor will then give your Holy One to see corruption. You are my inheritance, O Lord. You have made known to me the ways of life, you shall fill me with joy with your countenance. At your right hand are delights even to the end. You are my inheritance, O Lord. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. And you, lift up your staff and, with hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two, that the Israelites may pass through it on dry land. But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. The angel of God, who had been leading Israel's camp, now moved and went around behind them. The column of cloud also, leaving the front, took up its place behind them, so that it came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became dark, and thus the night passed without the rival camps coming any closer together all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night, and so turned it into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit, all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch just before dawn the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force a glance that threw it into a panic, and he so clogged their chariot wheels that they could hardly drive. With that the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel, because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head on toward the sea, when the Lord hurled them into its midst. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and the charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped. But the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore, and beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord, I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant, 
horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm The response is, Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself in glory. Let us sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously magnified, the horse and the rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my praise, and he has become salvation to me, he is my God and I will glorify him, the God of my Father, and I will exalt him. Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself in glory. The Lord is as a man of war, almighty is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his army he has cast into the sea, his chosen captains are drowned in the Red Sea. Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself in glory. The depths have covered them, they are sunk to the bottom like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, is magnified in strength, your right hand, O Lord, has slain the enemy. Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself in glory. You shall bring them in, and plant them in the mountain of your inheritance, in your most firm habitation, which you have made, O Lord, your sanctuary, O Lord, which your hands have established. The Lord shall reign for ever and ever. Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself in glory. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The one who has become your husband is your maker, his name is the Lord of hosts. Your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel, called God of all the earth. The Lord calls you back, like a wife forsaken and grieved in spirit, a wife married in youth and then cast off, says your God. For a brief moment I abandoned you, but with great tenderness I will take you back. In an outburst of wrath, for a moment I hid my face from you, but with enduring love I take pity on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. This is for me like the days of Noah, when I swore that the waters of Noah should never again deluge the earth, so I have sworn not to be angry with you, or to rebuke you. Though the mountains leave their place and the hills be shaken, my love shall never leave you nor my covenant of peace be shaken, says the Lord, who has mercy on you. O afflicted one, storm-battered and unconsoled, I lay your pavements in carnelians, and your foundations in sapphires, I will make your battlements of rubies, your gates of carbuncles, and all your walls of precious stones. All your children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. In justice shall you be established, far from the fear of oppression, where destruction cannot come near you. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm The response is, I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have upheld me, and have not made my enemies to rejoice over me. You have brought forth, O Lord, my soul from hell, you have saved me from them that go down into the pit. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Sing to the Lord, O you his saints and give praise to the memory of his holiness. For wrath is in his indignation, and life in his good will. In the evening weeping shall have place, and in the morning gladness. I will praise you Lord, for you have rescued me. The Lord has heard, and has had mercy on me, the Lord became my helper. You have turned for me my mourning into joy. O Lord my God, I will give praise to you forever. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. All you who thirst, come to the waters. And you who have no money, hurry, buy and eat. Approach by wine and milk without money and without barter. Why do you spend money for what is not bread, and expend your labor for what does not satisfy? 
Listen very closely to me, and eat what is good, and then your soul will be delighted by a full measure. Incline your ear and draw near to me. Listen, and your soul will live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you by the faithful mercies of David. Behold, I have presented him as a witness to the people, as a commander and instructor to the nations. Behold, you will call to a nation that you did not know. And nations that did not know you will rush to you, because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel. For he has glorified you. Seek the Lord, while he is able to be found. Call upon him, while he is near. Let the impious one abandon his way, and the iniquitous man his thoughts, and let him return to the Lord, and he will take pity on him, and to our God, for he is great in forgiveness. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, and your ways are not my ways, says the Lord. For just as the heavens are exalted above the earth, so also are my ways exalted above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. And in the same manner as rain and snow descend from heaven, and no longer return there, but soak the earth, and water it, and cause it to bloom, and to provide seed to the sower and bread to the hungry, so also will my word be, which will go forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish whatever I will, and it will prosper in the tasks for which I sent it. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm The response is, You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Behold, God is my Saviour. I will deal confidently, and will not fear. Oh, because the Lord is my strength, and my praise, and he has become my salvation. You shall draw waters with joy out of the Saviour's fountains. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. And you shall say in that day, Praise the Lord, and call upon his name, make his works known among the people, remember that his name is high. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Sing to the Lord, for he has done great things. Show this forth in all the earth. Rejoice and praise, O dwelling place of Zion, for great is he who is in your midst, the Holy One of Israel. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. A reading from the book of the prophet Baruch. Listen, O Israel. To the commandments of life. Pay attention, so that you may learn prudence. How is it, O Israel, that you are in the land of your enemies, that you have grown old in a foreign land, that you are defiled with the dead, that you are regarded as among those who are descending into hell? You have forsaken the fountain of wisdom. For if you had walked in the way of God, you would certainly have lived in everlasting peace. Learn where prudence is, where virtue is, where understanding is, so that you may know at the same time where long life and prosperity are, where the light of the eyes and peace are. Who has discovered its place? And who has entered its treasure chamber? Yet he who knows the universe is familiar with her, and in his foresight he invented her, he who prepared the earth for time without end, and filled it with cattle and four-footed beasts, who sends out the light, and it goes, and who summoned it, and it obeyed him in fear. Yet the stars have given light from their posts, and they rejoiced. They were called, and so they said, Here we are, and they shined with cheerfulness to him who made them. This is our God, and no other can compare to him. He invented the way of all instruction, and delivered it to Jacob his child, and to Israel his beloved. After this, he was seen on earth, and he conversed with men. This is the book of the commandments of God and of the law, which exists in eternity. All those who keep it will attain to life, but those who have forsaken it, to death. Convert, O Jacob, and embrace it, walk in the way of its splendor, facing its light. Do not surrender your glory to another, 
nor your value to a foreign people. We have been happy, O Israel, because the things that are pleasing to God have been made clear to us. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm The response is, Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The law of the Lord is unspotted, converting souls. The testimony of the Lord is faithful, giving wisdom to little ones. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The justices of the Lord are right, rejoicing hearts. The commandment of the Lord is lightsome, enlightening the eyes. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The fear of the Lord is holy, enduring for ever and ever. The judgments of the Lord are true, justified in themselves. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. More to be desired than gold and many precious stones, and sweeter than honey and the honeycomb. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, the house of Israel lived on their own soil, and they defiled it with their ways and with their intentions. And so I poured out my indignation upon them, because of the blood which they shed upon the land, and because they defiled it with their idols. And I dispersed them among the Gentiles, and they have been scattered among the lands. I have judged them according to their ways and their plans. And when they walked among the Gentiles, to whom they had entered, they defiled my holy name, though it was being said about them, This is the people of the Lord, and they went forth from his land. But I have spared my holy name, which the house of Israel has defiled among the Gentiles, to whom they entered. For this reason, you shall say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, I will act, not for your sake, O house of Israel, but for the sake of my holy name, which you have defiled among the Gentiles, to whom you entered. And I will sanctify my great name, which was defiled among the Gentiles, which you have defiled in their midst. So may the Gentiles know that I am the Lord, says the Lord of hosts, when I will have been sanctified in you before their eyes. Certainly, I will take you away from the Gentiles, and I will gather you together from all the lands, and I will lead you into your own land. And I will pour clean water over you, and you shall be cleansed from all your filth, and I will cleanse you from all your idols. And I will give to you a new heart, and I will place in you a new spirit. And I will take away the heart of stone from your body, and I will give to you a heart of flesh. And I will place my spirit in your midst. And I will act so that you may walk in my precepts and keep my judgments, and so that you may fulfill them. And you shall live in the land that I gave to your fathers. And you shall be my people, and I will be your God. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm The response is, Like a deer that longs for running streams, my soul longs for you, my God. My soul has thirsted after the strong living God, when shall I come and appear before the face of God? Like a deer that longs for running streams, my soul longs for you, my God. These things I remembered, and poured out my soul in me, for I shall go over into the place of the wonderful tabernacle, even to the house of God, with the voice of joy and praise, the noise of one feasting. Like a deer that longs for running streams, my soul longs for you, my God. Send forth your light and your truth, they have conducted me, and brought me unto your holy hill, and into your tabernacles. Like a deer that longs for running streams, my soul longs for you, my God. And I will go into the altar of God, to God who gives joy to my youth. Like a deer that longs for running streams, my soul longs for you, my God. 
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, do you not know that those of us who have been baptized in Christ Jesus have been baptized into his death? For through baptism we have been buried with him into death, so that, in the manner that Christ rose from the dead, by the glory of the Father, so may we also walk in the newness of life. For if we have been planted together, in the likeness of his death, so shall we also be, in the likeness of his resurrection. For we know this, that our former selves have been crucified together with him, so that the body which is of sin may be destroyed, and moreover, so that we may no longer serve sin. For he who has died has been justified from sin. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live together with Christ. For we know that Christ, in rising up from the dead, can no longer die, death no longer has dominion over him. For inasmuch as he died for sin, he died once. But inasmuch as he lives, he lives for God. And so, you should consider yourselves to be certainly dead to sin, and to be living for God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm The response is Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia Give praise to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let Israel now say that he is good, that his mercy endures forever. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The right hand of the Lord has wrought strength, the right hand of the Lord has exalted me, the right hand of the Lord has wrought strength. I shall not die, but live and shall declare the works of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The stone which the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing, and it is wonderful in our eyes. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. And when the Sabbath had passed, Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James, and Salome, bought aromatic spices, so that when they arrived they could anoint Jesus. And very early in the morning, on the first of the Sabbaths, they went to the tomb, the sun having now risen. And they said to one another, Who will roll back the stone for us, away from the entrance of the tomb? And looking, they saw that the stone was rolled back. For certainly it was very large. And upon entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, covered with a white robe, and they were astonished. And he said to them, Do not become frightened. You are seeking Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified one. He has risen. He is not here. Behold, the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you into Galilee. There you shall see him, just as he told you. The Gospel of the Lord Reflection How does Jesus' resurrection bring hope and joy into your life? Do not be amazed, you seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen, he is not here, see the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee, there you will see him, as he told you. Mark 16 verses 6 to 7 Early Sunday morning, the women went to the tomb to pay their last tribute to a dead body. The disciples thought that everything had finished in tragedy. Neither were ready to see an empty tomb, and hear the angel's message, Do not be amazed, you seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen, he is not here, see the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee, there you will see him, as he told you. 
the angel urged them to believe that Jesus had indeed risen, just as he had promised. In joy, then went to share the good news with the other disciples. Is it any small wonder that it was the women, rather than the apostles, who first witnessed the empty tomb and the resurrected Lord? Isidore of Seville, a 7th century church father comments on this, as a woman, Eve, was first to taste death, so a woman, Mary Magdalene, was first to taste life. As a woman was prescient in the fall, so a woman was prescient in beholding the dawning of redemption, thus reversing the curse upon Eve. The first to testify to the risen Lord was a woman, from whom Jesus had cast out seven demons. What is the significance of the stone being rolled away? It would have taken several people to move such a stone. And besides, the sealed tomb had been guarded by soldiers. This is clearly the first sign of the resurrection. Bede, a church father from the 8th century, comments, The angel rolled back the stone, not to throw open a way for our Lord to come forth, but to provide evidence to people that he had already come forth. As the virgin's womb was closed, so the sepulchre was closed, yet he entered the world through her closed womb, and so he left the world through the closed sepulchre. Another church father remarked, to behold the resurrection, the stone must first be rolled away from our hearts according to Peter Chrysologus, 5th century. Do you know the joy of the resurrection? It is significant that the disciples had to first deal with the empty tomb, before they could come to grips with the fact that Scripture had foretold that Jesus would die for our sins and then rise triumphant. They disbelieved until they saw the empty tomb. Bede explains why the risen Lord revealed himself gradually to the disciples. Our Lord and Redeemer revealed the glory of his resurrection to his disciples gradually and over a period of time, undoubtedly because so great was the virtue of the miracle, that the weak hearts of mortals could not grasp the significance of this all at once. Thus, he had regard for the frailty of those seeking him. To those who came first to the tomb, both the women who were aflame with love for him and the men, he showed the stone rolled back. Since his body had been carried away, he showed them the linen cloths, in which it had been wrapped lying there alone. Then, to the women who were searching eagerly, who were confused in their minds about what they had found out about him, he showed a vision of angels, who disclosed evidences of the fact that he had risen again. Thus, with the report of his resurrection already accomplished, going ahead of him, the Lord of hosts and the King of glory himself, at length appeared, and made clear with what great might he had overcome, the death he had temporarily tasted. One thing is certain, if Jesus had not risen from the dead and appeared to his disciples, we would never have heard of him. Nothing else could have changed sad and despairing men and women into people radiant with joy and courage. The reality of the resurrection is the central fact of the Christian faith. Through the gift of the Holy Spirit, the Lord gives us eyes of faith to know him and the power of his resurrection. The greatest joy we can have is to encounter the living Lord and to know him personally. Do you celebrate the Feast of Easter with joy and thanksgiving for the victory which Jesus has won for you over sin and death? Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you have triumphed over the grave and you have one new life for us. Give me the eyes of faith to see you in your glory. Help me to draw near to you and to grow in the knowledge of your great love and power. Jesus, I trust in you. Amen. Thank you for listening to the readings and reflection of today's Mass. Please like, subscribe, and share with your family and friends. Again, thank you and may God bless us all.